Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on circular and satellite motion. The topic of this video is the value of g, and we want to know what variables affect the gravitational field strength and how can the gravitational field strength be calculated. I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. According to Newton's law of universal gravitation, any object with mass exerts an attractive influence on other masses that are in its vicinity. We often rate the strength of this attraction by the gravitational field strength and represent it by the symbol g. We've learned in Newton's Laws unit that the force of gravity that, it, that the Earth exerts on an object is equal to the mass of the object multiplied by this gravitational field strength, which we know to be 9.8 newtons per kilogram on Earth's surface. We also have learned in this unit that the force of gravitational attraction between Earth and any object is equal to the universal gravitation constant multiplied by the product of the mass of the Earth and the mass of the object, and divided by the distance squared, where d is the distance between the Earth's center and the object center. We can take these two expressions for the force of gravity and set them equal to one another, and we have this equation. I notice that the mass of the object is on both sides of the equation, so I can divide through by the mass of object and cancel it from this equation. When I'm done, I now have an equation for calculating the gravitational field strength, g. It's g, little g, is equal to the universal gravitation constant, big G, multiplied by the mass of the Earth, divided by the distance squared, where d is the distance separating the centers of Earth and the object. Now if I were to use this equation to calculate the value of g on Earth's surface, I would need to know the mass of the Earth and the radius of the Earth. And when I substitute these two values into the equation to solve for the value of g on Earth's surface, I get 9.8 newtons per kilogram. From the universal gravitation equation, I get the same result for the value of g that we've been talking about all along. The equation we just derived was derived from the law of universal gravitation, and as such, it should be a universal equation applicable to any planet, not just to the Earth. So we can rewrite the equation as little g is equal to big G multiplied by the mass of the planet divided by the distance squared. Here, big G stands for the universal gravitation constant and has a value of 6.6743 times 10 to the negative 11th, and d stands for how far you are from the center of that planet. One thing we note when we look at this equation is that the value of g is location dependent. It depends solely upon the gravitational environment that the object finds itself in. The two parameters that are location dependent are the mass of the planet that's creating this gravitational field and the distance you are from the center of that planet. But one thing we note when we look at the equation is that the gravitational field strength does not depend upon the mass of the object that is experiencing that gravitational field. So one of the location-dependent variables is d, the distance an object is from the center of a planet. If the planet is the Earth and you're on its surface, then d is the radius of the Earth. But if you're not on the surface, but instead above it by some height, then the distance is the radius of the Earth plus the height you are above the Earth. I'm going to use this equation in order to calculate the g value as a function of height, and I'm going to record my values in this table. And I'm going to show the various locations on this little graphic of the Earth in terms of how high you are above its surface. We'll begin with the easiest case on the Earth's surface, the red dot right there on the Earth's surface, and the value of g is not surprisingly 9.8 newtons per kilogram or meters per second squared. Now if I go above the surface of the Earth, 3,000 kilometers. A kilometer is about 0.6 miles, a little bit more. If, but if I go 3,000 kilometers above the surface of the Earth, you'll notice the value of g changes. You can look on the diagram and see approximately where that is. 6,000 kilometers above the surface of the Earth puts me al almost a full radius of the Earth above Earth's surface, so I've almost doubled my distance here. You'll notice the value of g is 2.60 newtons per kilogram. I can continue to go up this diagram further and further further from the surface of the Earth, and you'll notice what's happening here to the value of g. It gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Finally, at 50,000 kilometers above the surface of the Earth, that's about 31,000 miles, the value of g is 0.13 newtons per kilogram, and you see it on the diagram, and we're talking about that location way up there. Now if I take all of these values for g at various height and plot g as a function of how far you are from the center of the Earth, I get a, I get a curve that looks something like this, and it shows this inverse square relationship between g and the distance you are from Earth's center.
Because the G equation is a universal equation, it can be used to calculate the gravitational field strength created by any mass in any location around the mass. For instance, we could use this equation to calculate the value of G on the surface of the planets of our solar system. All we would need to know is the mass of the planet and the radius of that planet. And if I take those values and substitute it into this equation, I get these values for the value of G. You'll note that the value of G is very location dependent. If you'd like, you can head off to our website and go to the interactive title, The Value of G on Other Planets, and explore the value of G on the various planets of our solar system. I've left a link to that interactive in the description section of this video. Here's the first of two practice problems. Determine the value of G on the surface of the moon. The mass of the moon and the radius of the moon are given. That's all I'll need to know to calculate the value of G on the surface of the moon. I can take these values for the mass of the moon and the radius of the moon and substitute them into the equation and pull out my calculator and I get a value of G of about 1.62 newtons per kilogram. Now this leads to a number of interesting facts. The first one of which is the, if a person weighs 160 pounds on the surface of the earth and they go to the moon, they would weigh 26 pounds. Now that's quite a weight loss program. And the second fun fact is if a person could jump three feet high on the surface of the earth and did the same jump on the surface of the moon, they would rise to 18 feet. I'm ready to go. In our final example problem, we wish to calculate the value of G on the space shuttle, which is orbiting the Earth at 500 kilometers above its surface. That's approximately 310 miles above Earth's surface. The mass of the Earth and the radius of the Earth are given. In order to calculate the value of G, I need to know the distance from the center of the Earth to where the space shuttle is located, and that's not the radius of the Earth. What I need to do is take the radius of the Earth and add to it the height the space shuttle is above the Earth and then I got the d value for substituting into this equation. So I take the radius of the Earth and I add to it the equivalent of 500 kilometers. That has to get converted to meters. So I multiply by 1,000 and I add 500,000 meters to the radius of the Earth and I get my value for the distance. That can be substituted into the equation for g along with the mass of the Earth and I end up getting a value for g of approximately 8.4 newtons per kilogram. Now there's a couple of things to note about this. First, it's smaller than on Earth's surface. In fact, about 14% smaller on Earth's surface. But second, it's not zero. So if we were to call the space shuttle a zero G environment, probably not a wise idea to do it, but if we were to call it a zero G location, what we don't mean by that is we don't mean that the G value is zero at that location. We'll talk more about that in a later video of this series when we talk about the idea of perceived weightlessness. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. Here are five resources you'll find on our website, and I've left links to each in the description section of this video. You have a calculator pad problem set with three problems that are perfect follow-ups to this video. You'll find an answer and an audio guided solution. Two interactive questions modules and concept builders and minds on physics great practice with the concepts you have two simulations you could visit and finally a tutorial page whatever you do i wish you the best of luck i'm mr h and i thank you for watching